Well, we're underway with Watford attacking the Vicarage Road end in this uh, first half. Garner with a, a header forward. But uh, an early foul, a free kick for the away side. Watford in their yellow shirts, black shorts and black socks. Bournemouth in their chain strip, white shirts. A bit of a green in their shorts, white socks. Stacey again into the uh, penalty, area, headed away again by Cathcart. Here's a uh, first touch for Ismail Assar, and he's brought down. Tom Cleverley didn't like that challenge one little bit. And goes racing to the referee, and who's got his yellow card out. And uh, it's an early booking for uh, Lloyd Kelly. A chance for Watford to, to clear their lines. But uh, look at that. That is a knee-high lunge from Lord Lloyd Kelly on his mile Assar. And you can see quite why Tom Cleverley was so angry, Tommy Mooney. Yeah, he's lucky he to only see red. It, it, I to only see yellow, should I say. I thought he'd caught him at the time, John. And it, I, I wasn't quite sure because I thought that, that, that looked far worse than it obviously was. But when you see it on the, the, the slow-mo, you know, it's one of those... Sar's got away from him and he's, he's gone in knee high. That's that's an awful challenge. I certainly, I'm on Tom Cleverley's side there. I'd, I'd be I'd be speaking to the referee. That was that was a horrible challenge. We've seen that. I mean, he's got absolutely nowhere near the ball and looks like no intention of getting anywhere near the ball. That is a shocker of a challenge. Rakes his stud down down the uh, right hand side of uh, Ismail Sar's knee, and Lloyd Kelly is a very lucky boy to. Uh, Still be on the field with just uh, under three minutes played. In similar fashion, perhaps, to Troy Dean. Now, Cathcart's found Saar with an excellent crossfield ball. And Saar with an early ball Gets in. It. It's Pulitza! Steve Papalitza marks his first league start with his first league goal for the Hornets. His first Watford goal. Great cross from Saar. The diagonal switch from Craig Cathcart finding Saar. And his, pearl, his ball was inch perfect. Pulitza finds the bottom corner. And Watford are ahead again at Vicarage Road early on. Watford one, Bournemouth nil. Well, it's the advantage of having that focal point striker. He's always stays in the middle of the pitch. Didn't quite hold it up, but the midfielders have won it back. And it's it's a fabulous ball in from Saar. Uh, and he's just it's one of those almost where you're just going to scream at him to roll it in between the defenders and the goalkeeper. And it couldn't be any better, the ball. And for Peritza to, to slide in and tap it in. João Pedro had one very similar um, against Blackburn through the week, but he took a step backwards before attacking the ball. And that's why Peretz has got, got in behind the defenders. And it, again, within within 10 minutes, it's another excellent start for Watford. Ian, here's Dan Juma, just on the halfway line. Kings run offside, so just holds it up. And here's Solanke running at Cabaselli, attacking the edge of the penalty, working into the box for Dan Juma. Dan Juma's cut back. Cabaselli turns it behind for Bournemouth's first corner. Yeah, it's good covering. It's really important that they interact the three centre halves because, you know, we've seen and we we only just discussed in the starting position of, of for them is different, but cabaselli has got to use his pace, and he's got back in and, and and cleared it there. But they'll be different and difficult from from set pieces. Bournemouth corner is an out swinger looking for Mepham who put his head on it against Pulitzer, but uh, was really really stretching and the header goes a long long way wide. Wide is Dan Juma. Finding Solanke on the edge of the penalty area. Solanke can turn. Right for the shot. Straight up Foster. But he had a little bit too much room there on the edge of the penalty area. Dominic Solanke scored in midweek at Cardiff. A, a rare Bournemouth goal. But uh, that was straight down Ben Foster's throat. Comfortable save for the Watford keeper. Yeah, fortunately. I mean, it's good play from Solanke. He's very, very good with the ball at his feet for such a big man. Again, is an out swinger looking for Meppen, headed away by Cabaselli. Cook turns it back into the penalty area. Cathcart and Cabaselli are there. Cathcart nods it away. And here's Billing on the edge of the box as we move into three minutes of added time. Rico turns it across in again. And it's a header from Solanke, which has no power on it. And Foster can make a comfortable save. Um, and the danger has passed. Yeah, again, it's, it's almost like a game of head tennis in there. You know, we, we're just not clear in the box quick enough and then Solanke's got in between the two I think the you know Solanke scored in midweek and he does create an awful lot of chances for himself but nowhere near scoring on that occasion and it's Pericha holding the ball up and finding Chalabar and Chalabar finds Capu on the halfway line forward into the feet of Pericha again but he runs into Lewis Cook the ball spins for Chalabar though and now Semmer on the left hand side Chalabar again Capu demanding it finding cleverly Capu again he drives it forward looking for Saar and Saar's inside the penalty area. It's Mila Saar for Watford. Great save from Begovic. Comes back to Saar again. Looks for Pericha. It's under hit and Kelly can clear. Well, 
almost out of nothing there. Ismail Asar found himself clean through. That's a really fine save with his right hand there from Azmir Begovic. Works it out to the right-hand side and Stacey. Stacey's ball is behind Solanke. Can he turn? He sets it up for Josh King to strike it over the bar. As Chalabar and Cathcart threw themselves in front of it. First side of goal for Josh King. And he wasn't far away, but Watford's lead is still intact. Yeah, it's good play from Josh King. And, and you see Bournemouth, tr the, that's probably what you'd expect of a, a, a Bournemouth team is intricate passing as opposed to just putting the ball into the penalty box. But good, good build-up play and hold-up play from Solanke to, to get Josh King the opportunity to, to shoot. Thankfully, he's missed the target. It's the feet of Solanke. Solanke onto his left foot, parried away by Foster. And uh, Bournemouth have a corner. Fine strike from Dominic Solanke on that occasion, but Ben Foster equal to it. Yeah, good save from Ben, but we see the danger of, uh, of Solanke. Hopefully, uh, my comments in the first half and of him needing four and five shots to score a goal don't come to fruition because he's had three already so there was contact and I think he should promote the fact that Semmer didn't throw himself like so many other players have lovely turn from Keener Keener attacks the edge of the penalty Keener goes for goal and Begovic has to just spoon it behind well that must have been moving we saw Keener um, embarrass Joe Hart in pre-season from long range and he nearly did the same to Asmir Begovic there lovely turn from the substitute attack the edge of the box and from what 30 yards Begovic wasn't sure, so just uh, shoveled it behind. It's Keener, edge of the box. Keener goes for goal. Begovic is parody again. Can Jao Pedro get there? Begovic, he's just there ahead of the Brazilian. And uh, pokes it away from Watford's top scorer, Domingos Keener, troubling Begovic again from distance. But uh, he's been excellent, Keener, since he come on. He's caused all sorts of problems, you know? And it, it looks like he's found that extra bit of confidence Almost very similar to the goal he scored. Was it against Tottenham or Middlesbrough yep, early in the season? Um, but since he's come on, he's definitely changed the game, and that's all a manager asks. And Saar holds off Stacey, and it falls for Jao Pedro. And Watford have got three, four forward here. Jao Pedro moving into the penalty area. Still going, Jao Pedro. Shot straight at the goalkeeper. Comfortable save this time for Begovic. Well, I smiled to myself when Jao Pedro picked it up. There was no way he was looking for a pass there. He wants to come on the pitch, make an impact, and get a goal. Not many options in the penalty area, Tommy. But there are now Cathcarts now no, gone Cathcart's forward. Cathcarts just gone into the back post, but there's Keener oh, to deliver. Six looked in towards the near post. And misses Pedro. Cathcart heads it back across goal. Chao Pedro still trying to make something of it. Still into the penalty area, Chao Pedro, and then goes for the near post and thumps it into the rookery end. And uh, Bournemouth have a, a goal kick. Bournemouth want to send the big men forward. Lewis Cook urging Lloyd Kelly forward. Free kicks on the halfway line. Vladimir Ivic organising from the edge of his technical area. Lewis Cook, right footed, chips towards the edge of the box. Up go the head, Steve Cook wins the first header. Here's Josh King. Foster tips it over the bar. Josh King just couldn't get the power on it to really trouble Ben Foster. Comfortable save for the Hornet stopper, but Bournemouth have another corner. Yeah, thankfully it was just, just behind him and he just tried to lob it over, over Ben's head rather than going for power. But they are a big team when they put the ball in the box. You know, it's difficult to defend against. In comes the corner, Cabasele and De Kong both meet it at the near post. Comes back to Rick Elmay on the half volley. Towards the near post, Foster claws it away. It comes to Lloyd Kelly and it's turned in by Chris Mepham from a yard out. And Bournemouth have an equaliser in the fifth minute of injury time. Somewhat ironic that Lloyd Kelly, who shouldn't be on the pitch, plays a role in the goal, but it's Chris Mepham who turns it over the line from close range. And Bournemouth have an equaliser late, late, late here at Vicarage Road. Watford one, Bournemouth one. Yeah, it's just tired legs in there and they've switched off. You know, Ben's done ever so well to come and get it. But then Cathcart and, and um, Chalabar sit in there, otherwise he would have been offside. Metham, but they've just tried to cover the goal. Disappointing, you can argue. You know, you, there's three of them jumped into Ben there, so understandably asking for for a free kick on on Ben Foster. But yeah, they it, they've got themselves back into the game at the last minute, which is the hardest thing to take. But you know they've they've probably arguably deserved a, a point out of this. And Chalabar will bring it away. Finds Jao Pedro inside the centre circle. There's the full time whistle. And, well, it's never dull between the Hornets and the Cherries, but it normally ends in a draw, and it does so again. For the sixth time in the last seven meetings here at Vicarage Road, the spoils are shared. It took until the 95th minute for Bournemouth 
to level things up. Stipe Perica putting Watford ahead on 12 minutes. He later went off with a nasty looking shoulder injury. But Chris Mepham turning the ball over the line from a couple of yards out after Watford couldn't quite clear a corner. Lloyd Kelly driving towards goal. Arguably should have been sent off in the second minute and perhaps could have gone again in the second half. But he stayed on and played a part in Bournemouth's equaliser. Domingos Kina. Nearly put the game to bed on two occasions, forcing five and saves from Asmir Begovic. But it's Chris Me Meppen who steals a share of the spoils for Bournemouth. It finishes between these two old rivals, Watford 1, Bournemouth 1. Click here to see more videos.